how Windows can beat Linux. Yeah, Windows could absolutely put Linux out of business if they did the stuff I'm going to talk about in this video. I know you can't put Linux out of business. That's a joke for the five people out there who don't understand jokes. Cheers, I feel your pain. So we're going to have a bit of fun here and talk about some things that Windows could do to kind of steal Linux's thunder, make Linux less relevant, just be a better operating system. So you kind of could translate this video into reasons why Linux is superior and things that make it much better just all the way around. Let me show you something right here. You see that price? That's what a retail key costs. That's silly. I always get OEM keys because they work and they're a fraction of the cost. And even if something goes wrong, you'd have to buy that OEM key many, many, many times over to equal the price of one of the retail keys. And right now I use whokeys.com to unlock my copies of Windows. You've got Windows 11 Pro, you've got Windows 10 Pro, Windows 11 Home, Windows 10 Home, and now we have two different flavors of Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC. The IoT version, this is going to get security updates until 2032, and then the regular LTSC version will get updates until 2027. So you see all these prices here? Let's just show you the price of Windows 11. They always have some kind of a sale going on, but we have a coupon code that'll go even farther. When you get to the checkout, enter coupon code TS25, and then let's watch that price come down. That's what I like to see right there. At the time of making this video, Windows 10 keys do also unlock Windows 11. Not the LTSC, just the regular. Now, if you want those security updates until 2032, I recommend grabbing Windows 10 LTSC IoT Edition. That's what I did in my system. I worked together with them to make sure that we had an IoT Edition available for everybody out there. So now we can get those extended updates. Now, note this is a very bare bones copy of Windows 10. It doesn't come with a lot of stuff. It's just you know, it's there. It's got all like the core functionality uh, up until like 2021. It doesn't have Copilot or Recall or any of that stuff running in the background, which is kind of a bonus in my opinion. But last but not least, we also have a couple flavors of Office. So if you're tired of paying that monthly fee, you can just do this. This is an offline version of Office. You set it up, you pay once. TS25 works to get your 25% off, and then you don't have to pay the monthly fee anymore. Let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro. All right, just put in my card info. There we go. Click on View Keys and Codes. Once you get to the User Center, click on Get the Key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that. Copy that. All right, here we just need to press Start and then type Activate. You'll see Activation Settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here it says Not Active. That's okay. Just click on Change Product Key. Paste in our Product Key. Press Next and then click on Activate. Hey, look at that. Active. Now I can come back over here and change my wallpapers and everything else. Great. Don't be messing around with those exorbitant retail keys. Grab an OEM key. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring, and now on to our regularly scheduled program. So I think the first thing we need to do is figure out what makes Linux Linux. And I think the first thing that makes Linux Linux is user autonomy. When you're on Linux, you can do whatever you want. You got the source code. You can make your own version of Linux. You can really change anything. So since it's open source, anybody can modify anything. There's so many different Linux distros. So if you need a distro for a certain thing, you got it. So if you got a distro that you like, but you want to change some things about it, you can do that too. You can do whatever you really want. For some people, full freedom means that they can just destroy and break everything everything and not know how they did it. So it's that's kind of a nerdy feature. Some of the distros out there have tried to like hone that down, but yeah, you can really do anything. And when it comes to like the UI and stuff, we're going to talk about that later, but you're not even stuck with a standard, you know, taskbar or whatever. That's like mostly standard on a lot of these things, but some of them are just window managers. They're not even like the normal desktops like we've known since like the old Windows days. Windows 95 really started with the taskbar and the, all that stuff. We haven't really changed much since then other than Microsoft trying to destroy the perfect thing that they made back in the day and it kind of perfected itself around the Windows Vista era, like the taskbar that is and the quick launch and everything. Anyway. All this is kind of tongue in cheek and it's because of the Halloween documents. What are those? Well, if you have missed all the news, the Halloween documents are just some documents that came out on Halloween. It was, I'll give you the two second version. It was basically Microsoft saying, hey, Linux does a lot of things as well as we do or even better than we do. And open source does a lot of things as well or better. And it's scary and we could use loser. We could use losers. We could lose users to open source. And it was just basically them saying, we know it's cool and we know it's better. What are we going to do? Well, Microsoft, this is free. Here's what you could do. First off, 
we need more distros of windows and we don't need a lot of distros of windows we just need a few things for us nerdy folk so here's what i'm going to suggest Seg segmenting this out into a few different things you could still have your windows home and you can make it free if you want to or you can make it 50 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever just you got your windows home it can be just like it is now just loaded with spyware and bloat and all that nonsense and that's the one that you throw on all the laptops and tablets and you know you throw it on pre-built systems and stuff that's the one that comes with the systems when people buy them they get that version of windows and you know you can put your camera right up their butt and just watch everything that they're doing so that's windows home probably should be free but I mean, you could charge 50 bucks for it, Microsoft, you could get away with it. Then we have Windows Pro, and that can also be very much the same, but during the installation process, let us have a say in things because this is a pro version so we know what we're doing so as we're going through like just let us say okay none of the we don't want copilot like no we don't want that we don't want recall don't want that just let us say no to a few different things as we're starting up and allow us to say online or offline account just give us a few choices that's all we need just a few you know we if we don't want something let us say no and just a, it doesn't need to be that many things just a few of the key things kind of the stuff that you like bundled together to make you know windows 10 into windows 11 just kind of let us remove that stuff and um, that'll be nice that's all and you can still charge money for it as people pay for it because they need it or whatever and then we need i think one more distro i mean you can go crazy with the enterprise and the iot and the ltsc and all that kind of stuff there's other versions of windows yes there's also server but we're not going to talk about that right now because i'm mostly focused on like desktop users so one more version of windows that i think would be a huge deal especially from people who are like looking between like, oh, how should I stay on Windows for this and that and the other, or should I go over to Linux? And I think if you had something called Windows Core, I think that could you know, make people kind of think about coming back to Windows. It's not gonna happen, but here's what I'm saying. Windows Core could be like, kind of like Arch, maybe a little bit uh, less nerdy in the fact that like it could all be done with like check boxes. So kind of like what I was saying with Pro, but just take that all the way, almost every feature should be able to be toggled on and off like what do you want you basically create your own version of windows it's like i want this i want that but i don't need this feature so it's like you know what i don't I, I don't need half of these features so just don't install them and then you just have a core windows it's like the kernel and the gui and whatever else explorer and a few other things just a few, just whatever you need to get it going so that's the base packet and then you just add stuff on top of that you know, Windows, I think, would benefit in general uh, just from having a structure like that, because right now you've got the recall nonsense and recall. I guess Explorer sees recall as a dependency. Why? That's insanity. Like you really should have the core of Windows completely separated from all of the software packages that go on top, unless they're like really important key security updates and stuff. As far as the updates on these different versions, I say home users just let them get the updates as usual just whatever updates just they get them pro users let them opt out of any update like whenever any updates are available say what it is and say do you want this or not other than security stuff that should be like you know security and then core users just let them pick different update uh, i guess pipes they can say i only want security updates that's it or they can say security and features or they can say ask me each time that's pretty much how i would do the updates The next thing that makes Linux Linux is the fact that it's community driven. And this is something that Microsoft will never do because they have to have total control. Even if this means that they'll sell more copies of their operating system, I don't see them letting go of anything. But the fact that the community drives the ship when it comes to Linux means that anything goes and it's, it's a beautiful thing. The other thing is that, you know, what motivates the community is not always monetary gain. It's not it's not always motivated by commerce. It's motivated by what they want to do. And that's a much more pure form of just creation. So they can create exactly what they need. They're not creating something to trick someone into making money. They're not creating dark patterns to get users to give their data to some evil company or whatever. They're just making what they need. So I don't think Microsoft will ever be a community driven company but I think they could open up certain pieces of the operating system that are not core to what they're doing and then allow the users to change things. So the thing I think they could open up is the shell. And that means like the shell that you're using, the taskbar, the explorer, all that kind of stuff. If they just open that up a little bit, you've already got like some people trying to work on stuff. We've got, let me show you what we got here. So you got Cairo shell, which is a totally new shell. It's, um, it's okay. 
It's not like super amazing or anything. And then we've got Retrobar, which is, is based on that. It's based on the managed shell that they, they've made a basically an API or whatever that helps work with this. And that's what you're seeing down here on the bottom. On the bottom of every one of my screens, I have this little bar and it's got a quick launch over here. And then I've got it set up to show the full names of all the things I have open. Anyway, there are some shell alternatives and I think Retrobar is good for most things these days so that's the one that i'm using but it would be really cool if we could just have it completely open so that i mean what if someone put plasma on here that would be freaking cool to actually it would be cool to be the cool desktop environment spelled with a k because 90s and all that is that when the kde came out anyway you could have that or gnome or whatever imagine being able to install stuff like that on windows and it would make it feel very different it would make it feel like something that's your own so i don't think windows will do that because they don't like relinquishing control, but I don't understand how it would harm them if they allowed users to change things other than the fact that, yeah, they might break things, but if they say we don't provide tech support for this, that's that's it, that's all they have to do. They say, nope, we don't support, what, what shell are you running? Oh, you're running custom shell, we don't support that, that's it. Um, if you wanna see a list of some of the alternative shells for Windows, they do have some. Most of them are not in development, um, and you know, if they have a version of them, you can like check it out and see what it's like, but they, they, you know, Microsoft hasn't opened this stuff up, so it's not easy to develop for, and there's not a lot you can do overall. I mean. You, can do some things, but it uh, seems to be kind of a pain in the ass to develop for it. I'm not a developer, but if someone in the comments has ever worked on this, maybe they'll maybe they'll know. I don't know. So next, we got to talk about package managers because with Linux, you got all kinds of stuff. You got apt and uh, with a DNF and and then whatever. What's Gentoo use? I forget. But people in the comments tell me because everyone tells me that Gentoo's got the best package manager in the world. But I don't feel like rolling my own thing and having it break. So yeah, there's a lot of different package managers on Linux, and you can add your own repositories. If you're just joining us and don't know what any of this means. When you're installing stuff on Linux, there's different package managers where all of the different packages are listed that are available for your distro. And then if there's something that's not there, you can go and find the repository and add that to your package manager and then it'll show up in there. And you can do some of this with Winget, but it's not quite there yet. Winget's cool, but it's not gonna replace like apt or, or DNF or anything else. So yeah, it's not what we would call a first class package manager. It's it gets by. All right, let's talk about file systems. Windows is pretty much NTFS, that's it. They did like the Windows FS or whatever, or the, I forgot what it was called, but they tried some other versions, but you know, NTFS is not bad. It's no BTRFS. I think arguably it's better than uh, ext4, but it's got a few things that ext4 doesn't have. ext4 has a few things that ntfs doesn't have. It's got much bigger file support, that's for sure, and it's pretty fast. It's very similar in speed. It's got journaling, so I don't I don't think ntfs is that bad. But if we had like native support for zfs and btrfs, and we just had some choices, that would be cool. I might still run ntfs. I'd probably run btrfs just for the better deduplication, better uh, shadow copy, and everything. So better for backups and everything. I, I think BTRFS is probably my favorite file system because it's also pretty fast. So yeah, but I don't know. I don't expect them to do that. NTFS works, even though it's kind of a dinosaur at this point, it does what it's supposed to do and runs fast and it, it works, it works just fine. All right, so Microsoft could do something really evil and I don't think they're gonna do this, but if they wanted to be really evil and keep people from using Linux, they could just say, you know what, all Microsoft Office files, docs and Excel spreadsheets and all that stuff, they will not open with any third-party apps. We're gonna put DRM on those things so that they can only open with Office. And then they could do everything they could to make sure that Office does not work in Wine or doesn't work with Linux or anything like that. They could make sure that it only works on Windows and Mac. That's it, because Mac also has Microsoft Office because they wanna make money on Mac users as well selling that software. So if they did that, I don't know, maybe some people who are you just using Linux casually would get very frustrated with the fact that they couldn't open a doc file or whatever else and just be like, oh, I really have to install Office and I can't install Office on this because it won't. And then that would, maybe that would get a few people. It would be really evil to do. It would also break, uh, you know, the Office documents when it comes to sharing them on the internet, throwing them into the cloud, doing different things with them. There's so many different things, converting them. It would make it, a, if you put DRM on those files, it would make Office into a mess. So I don't think they're going to do that. I'm just saying it's something they could do. It's <laughs> they were being evil, but yeah, they ain't going to do that. Anyway, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about for right now. Maybe there's more things that Windows could do. And the point of this video, again, 
was not to say that Windows is going to do these things and put Linux out of business or anything like that. The point really was to say that Microsoft has instituted their platform so much and they've gone so far away from what they originally started as, even though back then they still loaded it up with crap. I remember Windows 95 Plus with all that extra junk in there. And there was like advertisements for Disney inside the operating system. So that even when, the, you know, even from the beginning, as soon as you got a web, you know an internet connection, they're like, how can we throw more crap at them and make more money and put AOL on there and whatever else? Their goal is to make money. Their goal is not to give you a good user experience. Their goal is not to give you autonomy. And that's something that Linux can have. It can have any goal it wants because you can make any version of Linux. You got any version, you can get any version of Linux. You can install it on pretty much anything. That is the biggest operating system in the world when you think about mobile devices and everything else like that. But from you know strictly desktop perspective, Windows is still the biggest. So. I'd say when Windows 10 goes away and support for that ends in October, if you're not going to move to LTSC like I did, I think right now is a good time to start looking at Linux distros. I keep seeing people say, oh, I'm waiting on Steam OS. Well, there's Dora, there's OpenSUSE, there's a lot of stuff. Then you can install Steam and the Hero, Hero whatever it's called. The uh, uh, Yeah, you can install that on there. I don't know. I'm, for most people, I think Linux is going to work just fine. So, yeah, uh, if you want to know my favorite distros, well... I'll think about that right now. I'm using Fedora. Let me know if you think about this in the comments. Mice are half price with the coupon code Happy Mouse right now on EpicPants.com. So head over there and grab yourself a mouse, keyboard, maybe a mouse pad, and I'll see you in the comments. Mm -hmm.